Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we will be talking about what is happening across the Atlantic in terms of those tropical waves as well as what is now post-tropical cyclone Carl that remains a threat for portions of Mexico. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update on the tropics. And to show your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. Okay, and so let us go ahead and kickstart things with a view of the Atlantic. Let's return to that satellite view and we're seeing here that there is quite some activity that is noted. There is that cold front. Uh, there's a tropical wave that is making its way across portions of the Caribbean, the Western Caribbean. And there are two that are approaching the Lesser Antilles and another marked as a disturbance. And over the Gulf of Mexico, what we have is what's remaining of Carl. And let's go ahead and kickstart with that and so here we have the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center and we can see here that Carl has maximum sustained winds of 30 miles per hour and is moving to the southwest at 5 miles per hour. So the tropical storm warning has been discontinued from Mexico because of course the cyclone is no longer uh, really producing tropical storm conditions, especially tropical storm force winds. And so that warning has been discontinued. However, the cyclone could still uh, produce 2 to 5 Five inches of rainfall with local maxima of 8 inches across sections of Veracruz, Tabasco and northern Chiapas and Oaxaca states in Mexico through Sunday morning. And now these rains could produce flash flooding along with mudslides in higher terrain. So uh, though the cyclone is dissipating, all of the remaining convection is likely to bring a lot of rainfall to these regions and when we have extensive periods of heavy rainfall, that accumulation of water can result in all that flash flooding, especially in flood prone areas and so guys please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe if you're being or to be affected by what is left of carl and so now let's go ahead and talk about the tropical waves across the region so first we're looking at the caribbean here and we're seeing that there is some activity noted just around the vicinity of jamaica and in the western caribbean and so all of that is associated with the tropical wave that is making its way across the area all the shower and thunderstorms storm activity is quite limited but uh, due to the passage of this wave here it is possible that here in Jamaica we can experience some heavy rainfall more uh, most likely in the afternoon hours so uh, be aware of that happening and there is not really anything much with that wave of course development is definitely not expected of it and so let's go ahead and take a look at these two uh, waves that are making their way towards the Lesser Antilles and so here we are seeing quite a bit of activity that is noted out in the main development region in association with these tropical waves and so uh, they will be making their way towards the west of course they'll be propagating westward and looking at this uh, forecast from the National Hurricane Center here uh, we're seeing that for the next 24 hours that first tropical wave is forecasted to um, uh, be approaching the Lesser Antilles and if it has a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity being associated with it then the Lesser Antilles can anticipate increased rainfall across the area and then of course later in the early part of the new week that second wave behind it is likely going to be uh, approaching the Lesser Antilles and so as for the disturbance that is out in the Atlantic let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on for it and so here we are seeing a close-up view of the system and we're just seeing all the shower and thunderstorm activity not organized at all and uh, that is because of unfavorable conditions especially in terms of the upper level winds that are uh, noted across the area and so that is likely to prevent the system from really getting itself together and intensifying into a tropical cyclone because I mean we're not even seeing any organization and if we go on to the National Hurricane Center's outlook we're seeing here that the chance is at 10% for the system to possibly develop so it has decreased since yesterday and uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with it but development seems quite unlikely uh, due to those unfavorable upper level winds. And then now let's go ahead and talk about the various conditions conditions across the Atlantic. First, let's go ahead and take a look at that wind shear map. And so here we have it and we have the different colors, the red that indicates unfavorable wind shear. We have the yellow that means neutral wind shear and the green that means favorable wind shear. And so when we're trying to have uh, systems developing 
that tropical wave, for example, that is marked as a disturbance, the most conducive condition in terms of the wind shear would be the favorable wind shear because, I mean, that is when the upper level winds are not interfering much with the system as it tries to uh, get itself together and intensify. However, those strong upper level winds, that is the unfavorable wind shear, really helps to displace activity and prevent the system from growing and intensifying. Meanwhile, the neutral wind shear is not very impactful on the tropical. Meanwhile, the neutral wind shear is not very impactful. And then uh, we're seeing here that we have some favorable wind shear extended across portions of the Caribbean, but for the most part, we have that unfavorable wind shear that is really dominating most of what is seen on this map here. And so as we progress towards the end of the hurricane season, we're definitely going to be seeing less and less activity. And I think that it is certainly possible for us to see maybe a few more storms before the official end of the hurricane season. And this is the time of year to watch the South Caribbean for those spinners and uh, for them developing as they make their way towards the north. So uh, that is something that we'll have to watch for over the next several weeks. But of course, there's no guarantee that that is going to be happening. And then now let's go ahead and move on to the uh, to this water vapor loop right here. And so we have the yellow that indicates dry air. And so at this time, we have some dry air that is noted across sections of the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, also extended into portions of Venezuela. So this dry air will really help to inhibit a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity because it is instability that results in the development of showers and thunderstorms. But when we have dry, stable conditions, then uh, it's really the opposite. We won't see too much of that happening. But again, that tropical wave is propagating westward. And if it has enough activity associated with it, it could bring some inclement weather to sections of the Lesser Antilles. And then next, let's take a look at this ocean heat content map and though uh, we're not really seeing much activity the ocean heat content is still off the charts for sections of the Caribbean right now because I mean things are just so warm and in the northwestern Caribbean that is what fueled Ian several weeks ago to become such a disastrous hurricane so uh, it rapidly intensified into a cat 3 hurricane before making its way over Cuba and then it made its way into the Gulf of Mexico where it further intensified into a high-end category 4 hurricane so uh, Ian was a disastrous hurricane and this ocean heat content is really just very deep warm waters that would really help to fuel systems as they try to develop but of course that isn't the only factor the wind shear is also to consider as well as uh, how much moisture is in abundance within the region so even if we have a system moving into this region but not having all the conducive conditions then it isn't likely that we will see a lot of development but if we're looking at a highly conducive environment and we have something making its way into the area that would be a totally different story guys but thankfully that is not happening right now and uh, the tropics in terms of activity is pretty quiet aside from a uh, post-tropical cyclone carl and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated on those waves as time goes by and so that is really it for now guys if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share thoughts there and of course remember to always be weatherwise